and my message in general is that when we acknowledge a metabolic underpinning to so many of these chronic disorders, then there is in fact a ray of hope there because if there is a metabolic origin, then there can be a metabolic solution mm. because we can intimately, exquisitely, and rapidly start to change metabolic health. And thus the consequences of poor metabolic health are also to a very large degree changeable. Correlation between insulin resistance and tinnitus is remarkably high where it's, it's almost I mean, it's very uncommon for someone to have tinnitus and not have some underlying metabolic problem, namely insulin resistance. This is an area where there's, again, not too much confirmed, but part of the uh, connection between the two is thought to be a result of insulin changing the membrane potential, the nerve conductance or the conductance, the, the sending of a signal along neurons within the ear, within the cochlea. And in particular, insulin is known to affect the sodium potassium ATP channel, or uh, and that that's a little granular for for most of the listeners. But basically, when we're sending a signal along a cell like a neuron, we're sending that signal by nature of us rapidly shifting um, ions, um, you know, positive and negatively charged molecules, almost like we're sending an electric signal in a way. And insulin will regulate some of the primary channels that are opening to allow these ions to move across sodium and potassium in particular. Insulin is known to alter the rate at which that's working. Well, in insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia, this is something that becomes actually overactive. And so it can disrupt the conductance of the nerve signal in the cochlea, which, of, which may, it almost makes it uh, potentially hyperexcitable. And what should be a quiet nerve conveying no sound at the moment becomes a bit of a hyperactive nerve giving you a lot of static or that ringing. In the book, I recall that you mentioned that 92% of people with tinnitus, which is ear ringing, have hyperinsulinemia. Yeah. And then of Meniere's disease patients, which is, can be a debilitating ear disorder that involves ear ringing, 76% of patients with Meniere's were also insulin resistant. And something that was fascinating is that in the, the studies that, that were linked in the book about ear ringing and hearing loss and Meniere's disease, many of these studies were not looking at a diabetic population. They were right. looking at a pre-diabetic or non-diabetic population that had high insulin levels, which I think is incredible. This is, not, I mean, this, th this could be applying to people who their doctor has never told them they had a metabolic mm -hmm. problem. But of course we know that um, hyperinsulinemia can happen years, if not decades before we actually see the changes in glucose on our standard lab tests. So this is not just relevant to people who are out there who have a diagnosis of diabetes, but for people who may be on that earlier part of the, the spectrum. 